vessels have now had to burn fuel with less sulfur in it, and we are seeing the distortions uh, in the market. For example, the cost of IMO-compliant marine fuel has actually skyrocketed in Singapore, while high sulfur fuel oil has actually underperformed. What's the ramification? I feel like it finally happened. We've been waiting it for so long, and <laughs> the distortions are happening. What are you noticing? I know. It's been four years at least <laughs> since we've been talking about IMO 2020, and it's the end all be all for refining. But it's kind of come with a little bit of a, a, a blip, a, particularly for ultra low sulfur diesel. Um, we've seen the inventories build. You talked a little bit about it on the crude side, but in the U.S., you had such large builds in the, in the refined product side, particularly diesel, uh, just the past two weeks, 13 and a half million barrels. And, and it's really been a bit of a headwind for refiners. Mm -hmm. um, I think on the, the ultra low sulfur fuel oil, uh, you saw an expected increase because it's so difficult to blend, create the blend stocks that, that these ships can run. And so that is the ready-made made alternative. Um, and that's why that, that, that price has gone that, that far up. And then on the, the high sulfur fuel oil, you just can't run. The scrubbers are not uh, yet outfitted on all the different ships. And so there's a very low demand for it right now. How long do all these distortions and then the margin pressure uh, result in? Like how long does it last? I think it's not going to be very long from the, the outlook just because there's been so much refined product uh, in the market. You saw China, for example, issuing new export quotas. They put in major refining projects over the past two years that are flooding the markets. The U.S. itself, the demand growth has not been there. Uh, so we have plenty of product today to meet the demand. And uh, even though the, the high sulfur fuel oil is going to have very low bids, mm. uh, we have alternatives. You can, for example, not produce as much gasoline and use some of that feedstock to use for maritime fuel um, as an alternative. So I don't think you'll last more than one or two years. What I also find interesting, we just showed the chart, which is uh, VLCC and how much they're, when you're running certain products, like how much more you actually have to spend. So with the scrubbers, for example, uh, they're earning about 20,000 more a day than those without. Um, was that more or less than you expected? And I asked, does it cost so much money to put in the scrubbers? And there was always a question of like, how long do you get paid back? Is it worth it, et cetera? It, it's more or less what we expected. Okay. The question is, uh, how long will it last? And again, because we have so much diesel still, we know we thought there was going to be a problem because the crude slate in the world has gone very light mm -hmm. and that doesn't produce a lot of diesel. But we have a lot of, uh, the demand has just not been there from other uh, aspects, particularly with the trade disputes. So we have plenty of diesel today and unless we get a major pickup in growth, I think we will be well supplied for the short term.